Today we've got another video on the Volkswagen, uh, Volkswagen EOS. Um, today we're going to show you how to change the timing belt. Right, in this video I'm going to show you how to remove the or how to install a timing belt from scratch if you've removed something like a um, camshaft or um, put in a new crank this is how you'd set it up. Um, this also would apply if you're just changing the timing belt uh, I'll talk you through uh, what needs to be done on those bits um, but this is a complete job if you're not trying to keep everything the same when you take it apart and um, you want to know how to set it up correctly. Right, first of all, remove uh, the hoses as already shown and remove the water hose. This is to get those pipes out of the way. So remove those uh, bolts so that you can remove the fuel line pipes. So there's a clip there at the front and there's another one at the back um, you'll have to take my word for this as I couldn't show it with the camera. So once you remove the timing belt cover you can lift up the car onto jacks, remove the wheel And this gives access to the splash guard. Obviously I have a two post lift so I'm lifting mine up but it can all be done on jacks. Remove the splash guard. So remove the splash guard to gain access to the lower half of the engine. So here you can see the end of the crank and the drive accessory belt. That's the belt tensioner for the accessory belt. So to take the auxiliary belt off, place a spanner on the tensioner and push towards the back of the car. Push it away. It's 16 mil. And that allows you to re uh, release the belt. So here I'm removing the pulley. So I have one spanner to stop the um, crankshaft turning. While I re release the uh, belts with a spline tool. This sometimes gets a bit sticky. Just speed through this again for you. Just wiggle this wheel. So wiggle the wheel off. Leave, wiggle this wheel, leave that in place. And there we go. And you can see the drive belt there as well. Right, if we remove these, Bolts. So remove those oh, bolts. And there's three more there. There's an, another bit caught behind the tensioner, which we'll remove later. Okay, and I'll just speed through this for you. Now you're supporting the engine. Now I've um, supporting the engine. I have got the um, cam cover off because I've removed the cam shaft. But I'll talk you through what you need to do you can see there behind you could see the tensioner for the timing belt so normally like i say you'd have the engine cover in place you can use axle stands underneath and jacks underneath that's how i used to do it in the past 
So time to remove the uh, upper engine mount. These bolts are quite hard. Or quite tight, should I say. Again, normally you'd still have the cam cover in place, but as I've taken out the camshaft, um, I'm showing you, you can see how it was tight, just had to loosen it. Right, from under the car, removing the lower engine mount. Just trying to show you the bolts. There's one there, just on the end. They're quite difficult to reach. This is from underneath the car. Remove the so to gain access, the just remove the water so um, filler. The two bolts there. There's two bolts there. Just removing. So again, removing a couple of bolts on bits that are connected to the uh, top engine mount. And down here, there's a nut on top of. There's a, a nut on top of a, th a threaded bolt. So just removing that, this is what holds, holds the fuel filter in place. And as you can see, so there's the belt tensioner you can see on the right from the top. So I've got the engine supported so it doesn't drop. Like I say, I used to support this underneath with jacks and axle stands. So that's removing the top engine mount. And there is the top engine mount. Right, now what that allows you to do is, you can see. So now that gives you access to the um, bolt on the lower engine mount. Mount hole bolt so you have to uh, uh, go through this way to release it as uh, normal sockets and spanners won't fit in of course if you have a car that's not an EOS like a, a Caddy or Skoda or something with the same engine um, they normally have similar sort of accesses. So I've came out so far with a ratchet and now I'm moving over to a uh, ratchet spanner so I can get in there without the um, the socket and the ratchet being caught to give room for the bolt to come out. This is probably one of the hardest parts of the job. As usual, I'll put, I use the normal sockets and stuff, but I'm using some things, so I'm, I'll put a link in the description. So once you've removed the bolt, you can remove the lower engine mount. Right, remove the adjuster for the... Um, so now we're onto the, the drive belt or the auxiliary belt I've tensioner. Already taken, uh, I've, already the I've loosened the bottom bolt already. The um, it, sometimes to remove it, it makes yeah, it easier to put a pin in first yeah. so you can reach yeah, the bolt. But there it is, dropped to the floor. Yeah. So the there's the a, a bit of the plate that you saw me removing the bolts earlier below. Right now, if the belt was still in place, um, you would uh, loosen this nut. This would be on the belt, it's the tensioner. 
and you'd put the Allen key in and you would turn it in a anti-clockwise direction to release the pressure off the belt. So I'm just doing this to show you. Um, obviously my belt's already removed because I've removed the camshaft. But this is the process you would do if you were just changing the timing belt from uh, without removing any of the other parts. So now your belt would be off, so it's time to change the other parts that you need in the kit. So this is the water pump, it's got three bolt holes. So three bolt holes there. Remove the three bolts. This is obviously driven by the timing belt. So I put a bucket to catch all the water as it comes out your engine. Obviously um, antifreeze is um, dangerous to animals, so make sure you ca catch it and dispose of it in a sensible manner. So there's the old water pump. There was nothing wrong with that one. I'm just testing it. Nothing wrong with this one. But um, I've got a new one, so I'm putting a new one back in. So make sure it's got an O-ring on it. And um, you want to push that in nice and square so the O-ring doesn't get uh, caught. So push it in as far as you can go. And then slowly tighten the bolts up one at a time, not all the way. Just take them in a few mil at a time each bolt to pull the water pump in nice and square. That's the hard one. And then tighten up slowly to pull the seal in place. Apologise for the flickering light, I'm using a GoPro for some of the this so I can get the camera in. Right now to test the uh, to check that the camshaft and the um, crankshaft are in place using a Volkswagen timing kit that you can buy from a, a lot of places like eBay sector. As you can see through the hole there it's not lined up just at that second. I'll show you it lined up in a minute. So what you do is there's the uh, hole that would actually be on the engine block just there at the bottom just there so you slide the pin through the um, camshaft into that hole and then that locks it in position. So push the pin in fully so as you can see this is when it's lined up there you go there's the hole behind so you push the pin in there and that lines up everything. I'm just showing you with a spanner that it's locked in place so it can't move. Now down on the um, crankshaft, use another locking tool. You line it up with the arrows. And if you can just see the hole to the right where I'm going to rotate it and push the pin in, you can just see the hole there. So, as you see, I'm only a couple of degrees out on the engine. So, obviously the engine is not going to be turned over and hit the um, valves at the top. So, that's the tool seated in the hole and locked the camshaft in place. So here's a new uh, timing belt tensioner. I'm now putting that in place. There's a little tab that I'm just rotating it there for you. You'll see. So I rotate it so the tab fits into the engine block. 
and do the nut up um, you want to do it up so it's snug and then just loosen it off a bit so the timing belt can be adjusted ready sorry the timing belt tensioner can be adjusted ready for putting the timing belt on There we go, I tightened up snug and then just loosened it a little bit. And put the Allen key in the adjuster. And rotate in an anti-clockwise manner to adjust the tensioner to its um, most untensioned position so we can slip the belt on. And there we go, I'm just tightening it up so it doesn't move while I'm trying to put the belt on. Right, remove the um, bottom roller. You might have had to remove this to um, take the timing belt off in the first place. Um, sometimes they're a bit um, tight when the, this uh, roll is in place. Sometimes you can get the timing belt off with the roller still in place. So part of the kit, I had a new roller. Last thing you want to do is go through all this work again just to put in a new roller. So you might as well change it at the same time as the water pump and the timing belt. So I'm just pushing the timing belt, the brand new timing belt up to go around the uh, pulleys and the bit at the or the belt on the right wants to be as snug or as tight as it can so you don't have any spare spare teeth um, because the tensioner on the left is going to take out all the slack so as you see here's the top of it so slide the keeping the belt as tight as you can on the crank to camshaft on the right hand side where the timing belt tensioner isn't you don't want any any spare um, spare belt there so keep it nice and as tight as you can you might find that um, you have to loosen the um, the nuts on the camshaft wheel um, normally try and get it as tight as you can and uh, then you can adjust the um, nuts later to get the job done properly. So here's me putting on the new roller. And obviously tightening up with the new nut. Again I'm stressing that the belt between the crankshaft and the camshaft on the right hand side as you look at it is um, without any spare teeth on the belt that's as tight as as it could um, be so as you see here I'm just loosening the plate on the camshaft and I'm adjusting the tensioner um, I didn't I've lost the video which actually had the bit with the belt on but I'm adjusting the the camshaft um, so there's the belt on it now and it shows that the pointer is in between that sort of gap so you want the pointer once it's all adjusted and tightened up with the nut in the middle you want that pointer um, in sort of like that V gap so that shows you that the belt is under the right tension so when you turn over the engine uh, by hand um, so I'm just tightening up the the nuts now for the camshaft because everything is under tension from the tensioner so remove the pin out of the top on the camshaft like I say so pull the crankshaft locking tool out as well So you want to rotate the engine a full rotation, so 
Um, that is the um, crank goes around twice to the camshaft once. So here's the engine being turned Oops, round. A bit more, and it should be about there. Bit more. B bit more. It should be there if you can get your crank in. So as you can see here, that's the um, camshaft lined up. So we put the bolt, uh, the pin in, just to check. Oh, it's gone in, yeah. Let's see. So that should be all right, yep. shouldn't it? So, and we do the same with the crankshaft. Yeah, all the way in. Take the top pin. Okay. And Is it coming out all right? Yeah. Was that tight? No, that's fine. So it takes a bit of getting onto the teeth, so push that in. So that goat went in that fully. That's the end place. So you know the so. cam and the crankshaft is now fully lined up. That's perfect. Top's perfect. Time to change. So now it's just a case of refitting um, the covers and the engine mounting bolts as before. Of course, check the uh, timing belt again to make sure that that pin was in the middle of that V. So putting the uh, engine cover, so the engine mount back in, make sure um, that goes in between the uh, timing belt. So this is the tensioner going back in. I've got a pin in place. So it's in its retracted position so you can get both the bolts in. So again, after fitting the cover, find the keyway and slide the um, pulley back on and tighten up again with the splined bolts. So I'll just speed through this. Obviously I'm not bothered showing all the uh, plates being put back in place because um, that's straightforward. You just use each bolt to uh, that you use to take off the plate to put the plate back in. So I refit the um, accessory belt or the drive belt, depending on how you call it. At the moment I've got the pin in on the tensioner, so that's why there's uh, plenty of slack to be able to get the belt in. I'll say plenty of slack, it looks a little bit snug, but it just fits in. Obviously you put the grooves around the groove wheels and the smooth side, so using an open end spanner on the tensioner, release the tension, slide the pin back out, put the tension on the belt, and that's the belt tensioned. So refit is pretty much the same as removal, so I've got the bottom mount in already, so now I'm putting in the top mount. Obviously we've got the cover to go over the uh, camshaft. So you can see the uh, camshaft there with the cam cover off so you can actually see the cams on the engine. I've got some other videos that actually show um, with removing the camshaft to do the injectors and to do the um, valve guides. So please watch those if you'd like to. Please uh, like and subscribe as well. Um, these videos, how-to videos are notoriously hard to get subscribers so if this helps you please subscribe for me